Hey everyone, welcome back to Back Mac Sci. And today we're going well, just me today, Rick is in here. I'm going to be showing you a few of the things that I bought on Amazon recently. I just want to show it to you today and show it to you in action, or at least a few of them. And uh, it's going to be sort of a funny video. So first, let's look at the new element samples that I bought. First up is some aluminum granules. Uh, this is actually just a bone it. Okay, that's my sister. And I actually got this as a bonus sample because I ordered like a few, as you can see over on the right. But these are just some granules, and I don't really know how to show it in action, so. Next up is my barium sample. I don't really want to use uh, my barium right now in this video, but. If you guys come up with an interesting reaction, I might make a little series and use up a few of these chunks. Uh, again, I don't really know um, how I'd make it in action. Okay, next is my cobalt sample. It's really pretty. The in-action stuff is kind of getting pretty old. Psych! Okay, next is manganese. I think I got a layer of manganese dioxide on it, but sometimes I can see um, the metal. Okay, next is elemental silicon. This is really cool. There it is. And I take it out of the container sometimes. And next, titanium pieces. Little pieces from, uh, and these are all pure samples, or wherever they are, all over here. Ooh, out of focus, yay. Um, anyway, titanium, transition metal, as are a few of these. Um, super pretty, uh, lightweight, barely feels like I'm picking up anything. Next, vanadium. This is super nice because of um, they're very unique <laughs> crystals. I haven't seen any uh, metallic crystals like it. Next is a bar of tin, and um, I'm going to be doing some chemistry with it in the next few videos. Okay, so here's my next order. Uh, here's just a brief glance at it. First up, let's look at the receiving flasks, and they're also round bottoms, but I'm just going to be using them on the receiving side of any of my distillations. Um, first is a 100 milliliter one. Um, if you want to see that in action, look at the description. Next is a higher quality 250 milliliter LeBoy round bottom flask. Okay, let's see it in action. Uh, next, I got around... I don't want to count and be wrong, so I got a few stir rods. Let's see that in action. Now, for the beginning of chemicals, I got a pound of potassium permanganate. Uh, that's super uh, important oxidizer in your chemistry lab. So, if you want to see that in action, uh, there's a video coming out on... Okay, next, nickel sulfate. You all have already seen um, this in action. Uh, I got uh, 113 grams of it. Here it is. It's a blue-green crystalline ionic compound. Next, potassium iodide. This is also going to be used in some upcoming videos. As you can see, I haven't taken off the seal yet because it's super humid outside right now. Look at that. Wait. Look at that. That's all rain. I'm going to make iodine from that. 
and I got 100 grams of it. It wasn't that expensive. I think it was like $13. So that's pretty good. The reason I got this is because it's easier to make iodine from potassium iodide than it is to order iodine and make potassium iodide, which can be used in a lot of uh, reactions. Next, uh, multiple uh, graduated cylinders. 10 milliliter, 25 milliliter, 50, and 100 milliliter. I'm not gonna do an inaction for this one. Next is a submersible pump. As you can see, it, I think it was actually like less than $10, maybe even less than five. And I was questioning whether it was like some bad quality. So it works, uh, I'll do an inaction one right now. Next, we have some transfer pipettes. I ordered a 100 of them, and that's because I'm always using them up, and for the past maybe year, I've been reusing six of these, so if you've ever seen a pipette in my in my lab, then it's been one of those six, but not anymore. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I hope you enjoyed this lab update. Bye. <laughs>